so COVID hits in March and then uh, COVID hits March and then kind of everything's like, oh, don't really know what's going to happen now. Sure. You know? I don't know how, what's going on, but UFC continued to be the only sport really happening at the time. Fucking shout out to Uncle Dan for yeah. that one. That was special. Really. And that's where the sport grew more than it ever yeah, has. Yeah, it did. Yeah. <clears throat> Especially when it comes to sports gambling and stuff like that. You know what I mean? He's taking advantage of a market where it's like, yeah. you know, you got people that love to gamble and there's nothing else to gamble on but fights. <laughs> right, right. right. I didn't think about that at all. Yeah. yeah that so that, that was huge for yeah. the organization. Are you running? Uh, well, two basically, and then fighting. Once fighting like starts bringing real money, like big boy money, you're gonna. Uh, I still I enjoy cutting hair personally, so. I remember you told me this one yeah. time. You gave me a haircut. You're like, dude, I don't think I'll ever stop doing this. Yeah, seriously, cutting hair for me is like at this point is more of a like kind of an escape from training all the time. You know what I mean? Really? Actually, like it's like just a different thing to do. You know. It makes sense. I mean, compared to fighting another human being in a cage, it's like, it's a pretty different spectrum of activity, right? Like, yeah, yeah. It's relaxing to me. Like, it's just calm. You get to chat with someone. It's not right. bad. You get to listen to their life story. Yeah. And plus, it's satisfying to see, like, a cut from the beginning to the end. You know? Right. When did you when did you start fighting? What was the... Uh, how so early did you start I, training? I was 11 or 12 when I first started. Wow. You and your brother both at the same age? or? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, my brother's a year, and a, a year and a couple months younger than me. Like... 14 months or something like that and then uh but we start at the same time right yeah so what did you start there. training uh when what what did you like what was the first oh discipline that it you was more like uh kickboxing kickboxing gym, yeah okay would you do you like that or right off uh, the bat or what? yeah pretty much right away the individuality of the sport is what drew me to it so it was like Basically, no matter how, how, as hard as you work is, is what you're going to get out of it kind of thing. You know, it's, it wasn't like team sports where you have to rely on someone, rely on other people mm -hmm. and a lot of like opportunity, say, than just putting in the work. Right. Know. Did you play in other sports that you like? Uh, I played soccer growing up mainly. Oh, nice. Yeah. Me and you both, eh? So yeah, once, once that started going, you started what, enjoying it so much that you thought you could make it a lifestyle. Did you ever think that like career? Uh, so I originally, my dad got me into it. More as a fan, and I was kind of like a diehard MMA fan probably for a year or two, yep. or like about a year before I started training. And then when I moved back in with my dad uh, from my aunt's house, uh, I tried out a class, and it was pretty much history from there. Oh, really? I, was, I quit all other sports and just started <laughs> focusing on that. Yeah. That's crazy. What was like, What were you watching when you were younger? Were you watching a lot of like Japanese Grand Prix stuff or what? Uh, w uh, for MMA? Yeah. Uh, at the beginning, honestly... The first live uh, car, card I watched live, like not in person, but like live pay-per-view was Anderson Silva versus Chael Sonnen. Damn. So yeah, it was a crazy <laughs> fight for me to watch for the first one, but I would wa I was still a fan before that, you know, fa being Canadian, right. fan of GSP, and then Frankie Edgar was probably my other biggest like uh, Inspiration. idol at the time. Oh. Did you ever watch the old stuff like Crow Cop and Fedor? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I remember I used to, I bought all these MMA DVDs from Best Buy. It was like UFC Greatest Hundred Fights Sick. stuff like that. Yeah, that's hype, man. So you fell in love with the sport from you say watching the videos, or was it more from the gym, or was it a combination? Uh, my of everything? dad, my dad just kind of introduced me to the sport, started watching it, and then I was just like kind of geeked out and always like staying up to date, checking. Uh, MMA sites every day for new news, etc. Right, right. You know, cool. D did you ever think like you know <laughs> you could be fighting in an octagon in the same association that you watched? Uh, on it. Well, so up? from the day I started training, that was my goal. Like, right. Like pretty much, I've always been a competitive person throughout my life. So it was like having this sport. I was like. It, it was going to be 100% or I just wasn't going to do it, you know? Well, this is a sport where, like, it kind of has to be that, right? Yeah. Because if you're kind of the middle of the road guy, that's where you get really hurt, right? Yeah, exactly. And it's like I never wanted to be a person where it's like, oh, I fight once and, you know, I'm right. happy with that. Like, I wanted to make it to the top. Right. So how does the how does that process work from Windsor, Ontario to UFC? I want to know a little bit about what organizations you fought in here. And then how you finally got the shot, the call up. So originally when I first started, I probably had my first fight uh, a little less than a year after I started training. Um, I started uh, 
my first actual competition was a jiu-jitsu uh, competition. I pretty much just learned most of my jiu-jitsu stuff off YouTube at the time <laughs> with my really? bro- with my brother. Yeah, and then we'd practice at the gym because the, the gym at the time that I was training at didn't really teach it as much grappling. Right. So... Uh, is there I, no other gym, by the way? Sorry, is there no other gym that had jujitsu in Windsor at the time? Uh, at the time, yeah, there was other gyms, yeah. but uh, it just—I was so young. Yeah, you know what you, I mean, okay. I wasn't really too like uh, like knowledgeable on where right. to go and stuff like that. But uh, eventually, I made that switch down right, the road. Right. Um, but uh, so yeah, I had my first jiu-jitsu competition. Uh, won some divisions, and I did two divisions. I won. Uh, or I got silver in one and then bronze in another or something like that. Which weight weight class was this? You remember? Mm, I was probably only like one forty at the okay. time. I was. Well, that's uh, like super. I mean, that's super technical stuff, right? Like yeah. The lower the weight, the the highly technical. The yeah. It was it was a different skill level too than what I was, uh, and it was like a kids division. I think I was probably only like twelve or thirteen at the time when I competed. Right. And then after that, my first actual fight was a amateur boxing match in Detroit. And that I, sounds... I, yeah, I fought a guy. He was actually in my corner for my first fight. No way. And uh, I uh, fought a guy who was pretty experienced. I think he had five fights at the time. I only I didn't have any. It was my first fight. And uh, I ended up winning. So that, that was a crazy experience for me. Uh, it was just a decision. Just a decision? Yeah. yeah. But Still. Uh, yeah, it was... Th- and then after that, that high of actually winning a fight, like a combat, you right. know? Uh, Jiu-Jitsu is a little different, but that high I experienced in that fight was just something... Honestly, I don't know if I experienced that level of in anything, a satisfaction since then. You know what I mean? Right. But still, you get you get a little glimpse of it, of, depending on the, uh, I would say, like how big the fight you're having sure. is, you know, or how yeah. hard you worked. That That's a big factor into it because I think, you know, it was my first experience of like, okay, you put the work in, it's going to pay off type thing. You right. Know? But it's it's different. It's not like you put in the work in soccer, you get on the field, you win or lose, you're gonna go home fine. Yeah, you're putting exactly. yourself in like at risk, at right? risk, and you're a young kid. You're fighting someone that's older, probably right. Yeah, and experience, and, and the the win is 100 percent you, you know right? I mean? Despite having a team behind you and help people helping you train when you're in there, it's all 100 percent you, right? So if it, if anything goes wrong, you have no one else to blame. Essentially, yeah, right? Exactly, you have no one to blame. Uh, it's very and, dire. It's very like you know like. It's all or nothing. On oh, a hundred percent. And the more I've fought since then, and it's like you have a like a lot of people that are with you when you're winning, and then a lot of people that aren't yeah. with you when you're losing. You know, but you realize the fake ones. I- exactly, yeah. exactly. So it's it, it is really at the end of the day, a hundred percent you. A hundred uh, that matters. That's it. You know, right? That Detroit there. fight was was that sketch a little bit always when someone said uh, they fought in Detroit. So, so this one was an actual official amateur oh, boxing shit. match, so it wasn't bad. But the gym wasn't a nice gym at all. Right? It, it's still it's still around right now, even. But uh, um, yeah, it wasn't a nice gym. It was kind of whatever. But it was an official amateur boxing. It was match. Sang- it was sanctioned all sanctioned, that, obviously. Yeah, so it wasn't bad. Right. I, I didn't get into the amateur MMA scene in uh, Michigan. Because that's where it that's is really where okay. Sketchy. So that's where it gets sketchy. Because yeah. I know, do you know a guy named Goron? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. He told me he fought in somewhere in Michigan. Some yeah, bum fuck nowhere play. I have no idea. Yeah, and you had to literally walk in and like everyone would take out their guns, put oh, them yeah. at the counter. They would go in. There's an oct- octagon. I don't even know what to fucking call it. Octagon. It was a cage that yeah. looked like an. Oct- and then there's like drinks around. It's like a bar mm. with a cage in the middle. Yeah, pretty much. And it was hostile as fucking there. Even after yeah. he, he ended up beating the guy, but after he did. They wanted to like a guy wanted to fight him in the parking lot. And yeah. I think my guy, I think he just retired after that. He's like, okay, that was I had my like, yeah, my one and my done. I did it. Yeah. I don't want to do. I don't want to go down this route because this is this is what you have to do if you want to actually get to the top. Yeah, yeah, no. So this wasn't sure. that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so after that first amateur fight, I just continued to fight. I did mainly amateur boxing at the beginning because for the age I was, that's pretty much what was mostly available as far as in this actual area fighting. or in general. In general. In general. In general. So. Uh, even when I was fighting, like ready to jump into pro MMA prior to that, uh, amateur MMA wasn't even super prevalent yet. You know, uh, that's more, it's, they got some good organizations now for amateur MMA, but at my time it was more like the sketchier, like Michigan stuff. And I was young right. too. So, uh, anyways, I continued to compete in like local, like grappling competitions and then like within Ontario and, uh, and then kickboxing, uh, within Ontario, I, uh, 
and actually all of Canada because I was like good Calgary. diversity, like good diversity of skill sets you're building. Yeah, so yeah. like that that's pretty much what I want to focus on. Like GSP being one of my like you know, people to look up to, he, he, the biggest thing he stressed all the time was like mastering each individual martial art before, right. before coming to MMA, you know? Um, and he was ahead of his time at the time for martial arts or MMA in general, right. where he, 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 he brought everything to the table at once where it was like, it was still the era of like the the guys that know one discipline sort of yeah. or maybe two, but yeah. GSP was so well rounded. Exactly, he could so, beat you in any way you wanted. Really. Yeah. So if there was a way to exploit you, GSP was able to do that. You know, and that's kind of I didn't want to leave no stone unturned when it came to that. So getting the competition experience in individual martial arts like that was was dire for me. You know. Right. And then so I won uh, two amateur two world amateur kickboxing belts, uh, one for the IKF, one for the WKA. I won. Uh, IBJJF uh, World Nogi Championship at Blue Belt as a juvenile. Wild. So I was pretty successful in the amateur career. And at this point, I'm about 17. And uh, I just did one amateur. So I'd actually scheduled my first pro fight before I did my first amateur fight. So that whole experience of my first pro fight was uh, interesting as well. So I did one amateur MMA fight in Michigan, actually, in Port Huron. Okay, that uh, sounds good. It, it was a pretty quick fight. Just... Uh, it was either I forget if it was a submission, but I got on his back and either uh, like just finished with a TKO or it was a submission. I, yeah. I honestly can't American remember. American guy, by the way. Pardon, American guy. Yeah, American yeah. guy. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> and then uh, so there was that, and then <clears throat> that March is when I made my pro debut. It was actually for a TV show called Fight Exchange. Right. And uh, it was through the Super Channel, which is a Canadian network uh, on Kojiko, I believe. And uh, so. That whole series was like uh, me and uh, three other Canadian fighters went to Japan for two weeks, and uh, they kind of just filmed the lead up to us. Seen that? That that sounds cool. Uh, Yeah, I think it's somewhere online. Um, And then uh, they filmed the fight itself. So I made my pro debut at seventeen in Pancrase. So that's a pretty like legendary MMA organization. So wild. It worked out perfect, and then I wasn't able to fight in North America until I was 18, so I had maybe like six, seven months hiatus, and yeah. then made my pro debut, or sorry, my Canadian debut in Calgary uh, for this organization called Hard Knocks, mm-hmm. which I had two fights for them, and then at this point, I'm 3-0, and uh, and my first loss, I guess, was in Michigan also right. against a guy named Vince Murdoch. Uh, and uh, why, 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 why you lost? Uh, it was a what split happened? decision, but it was like if you, close? It, 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 not even close, not even close, not, not even close. It was pretty blatant, like right. thing. But at the time, I'm only 18, so it's whatever, you know. Yeah. But it kind of hurt me a lot at the time because it's like that. That's all. That that's the only thing about MMA where it's like okay. No matter how hard you work, or even if you beat the shit out of someone, you could still possibly right, lose. Yeah. Right? You can't leave it on the table for yeah, the judges. Yeah, exactly. So that's the only thing about fighting where it's like, eh, you know, it's kind of up in the air. But that's every sport. It, yeah. To some extent. Like, I mean, fucking yeah. soccer, basketball, the refs have even more probably control in the game. Yeah. Uh, actually, I don't know if they do. I don't know. But point being, it's like. Yeah. The, th- the, the, the only difference between judging an MMA and other sports is that one loss can change the whole trajectory of someone's career. Right. Especially where, early. Yeah. Where it's like one call in, in sports, maybe if it's a very high level game, you know, yeah. uh, possibly, but if it's a regular season, bad call, uh, you know, right, it's right. whatever, make it up next week or right. later in that week. Right. And your salary is also big time based on your results. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like the other guys are getting paid just to show up. Yeah. Like one loss in MMA, I would say probably sets you back like, one to three years, depending. Oh, really? You know what I mean? As far as like, because you can't, it, you can't just go play games like you can in uh, right. sports. You gotta schedule a fight. You gotta fight. You gotta make weight. You know, you can only do that three to five times a year. Five being a lot. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um. So and three even now at the higher levels, like you don't even see people fighting three times a year as often anymore. Right. Especially in the UFC, it's so there's such a big roster now that. They're booking people they're ready 12, 12 16 you. weeks out, you know? And, yeah, yeah they're ready yeah. to kick you out as soon as yeah. a new guy comes comes around. So, uh, but, yeah, at that point, I'm 3-1, and one, and then I signed with this organization called TKO, which is Canada's biggest, like, yeah, yeah. historically their biggest uh, organization. They've bred the most UFC fighters and most, uh, like, high-level UFC guys. Right, right. Out of Canada, anyway. Um, 
So I fight for TKO. I win my first two. And then I lose to a guy named Alex Morgan, who just fought on Contender Series uh, a couple, like, last week. Um, and then uh, then I win my next my next one, and then I get a title shot because more the way it worked out, it, we had a ranking system in TKO. Right. And Alex ended up losing... So I got to fight for the the belt against Charles Jordan, who's yes. cur- currently in the UFC. Yeah, I just lost this weekend. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he had a very close fight with Shane Burgos the fight before that, which I thought he won personally. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that was a ranked opponent. So Jordan's doing quite well in the UFC right now. Uh, pretty much. He's entertaining, ahead. by the way. As well, yeah, he's a fun guy to watch. Yeah. Like, I, I tune in more, not even just because I fought him before, but because he's he is actually. Yeah. He they're they're advertising him more now. As an entertaining fighter. Yeah. They're giving him the proper matchups to where they know it's going to be right, right. A, a war, you know? Right. Um, if you love the sport, you love watching a guy like that. He's just yeah, fun to watch. Exactly. Yeah. He's going to put it out there. He's going to put it all on the line every time. Um, and I think he's going to have a... That's pretty much what his career is going to be based right. around. You know, he's not going to be a title contender because he lacks a lot of skill sets that it takes to be a champion. Right. But as far as excitement... Entertainment. Also off off uh, fight entertainment. Like on Instagram, he's yeah. pure joke. So he's and already built a fault. Like, he's like, kind of like a mini... Shane O'Malley kind of yeah that's kind of I see him at least like. and his TikTok is doing quite well too is it yeah at like two or three hundred thousand followers on there so all right respect. uh and uh so yeah you had four you were four and one what five and one and then you got a title shot what was it, uh, five and two I, I was five and two yeah six and two title shot seven and two beat Jordan nice. uh, and then I had a title defense against a Brazilian who also ended up beating Morgan uh by the way, sorry, in that organization, it's not about, like, name, hype, money. Is it more actually, like, results? Yeah, like, There's not a lot about, of that bullshit where, like, you can have, like, a fucking guy that's, like, mid-table get a title fight just because of the name, right? No, so they had an actual points-based system. Point-based system, okay. Yeah, so it's, like, if you win this way. That's so much better. Yeah, if you win I mean, this way, this is your points. To the fighters, it's better. Yeah, 100%. But for the fans of the sport, maybe they want, like, the name. I don't know. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, it, it works for so long, but... It, with a shallow roster, it doesn't work because you have the right. guy with the most points always, uh, you know what I mean, far ahead of the group. Right. Um, and then, uh, so I beat this Brazilian. He was on a 13-fight win streak. He was uh, 25 or 26 and, and 6 or something like that. Had that, that many fights under his belt? Yes, and I, I was only, uh, <clears throat> I want to say I was 20 at the time, and then I beat him in a five-round fight, and I finished him in the fifth round. So that was, that was one of my bigger wins of my career. Especially after he had already beat Morgan, so I was like, "Oh, Dude, he had five more, five times more fights than you almost." Yeah, That's at the time. So when I fought him, I was only seven and two, eight, eight wins. Yeah, at, right. Like, at least three times more fights. That's four crazy. times more. Uh, and uh, so I beat him, and then <clears throat> more. I get a rematch with Morgan. And I lost again. So right. Morgan's been my, kind of my kryptonite throughout my career, <laughs> right. and that's MMA the math. Man. That's MMA math, right? You know what I mean? I beat two guys that beat him, right? And I just he would. Is it a style thing or? Uh, I think it was a style thing. I yeah. think it was a little bit mental at the time. I was still young, you know what I mean. So I kind of right. weighed in on me a little bit, and it definitely was like a game plan issue. And I felt like a lot of my loss in my career. I don't really feel like the guys were better than me, right? Well, you have to also think that way because you want to be in your own head that you can beat these guys, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Oh, I know. I have the skills to beat everybody yeah. I've lost to by right. far. Uh, it's just for me is finding my mental game. I feel like has been a long process, you know. Right, what I mean? right. And that's where you, f- I, I feel like you see in MMA a lot of late, late resurgence in fighters' careers. And I don't even know if you can consider mine a late resurgence because I'm only 24. Or you're, yeah, like what you're talking about, you're <laughs> so 24. <laughs> I don't, I don't think my career is even close to being over. It's just a matter of, you know what I mean. I'm kind of my own worst enemy when it comes to sure. a lot of these things. So, uh, I mean, look at Stipe. Yeah, like, look how late Stipe found his like run. Yeah, he was like in his mid thirties almost. And at the beginning, it's like he and lost. he was like mid, like he was like average at the beginning. He was yeah. like getting like, he, he lost, lost to Stefan Struve, right? And right. He, you know nobody's gonna think a guy like that's ever gonna be a dominant champion. Right, right, right. It's a crazy sport. Like like the math but doesn't add up. Charles Oliveira is a uh, he yes. had like a five hundred UFC record at the beginning. Uh, right. But that's what happens when you get into the UFC at 20 years old. You're going right. to win some, you're going to lose some. They call the guy like he's an early quitter or like, you kinda, yeah. like he lost a little bit of the will in some of the longer fights. Yeah. Now he literally looks like a demon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You drop that guy, you should fu- count your blessings. That right. You know what I mean? Because that guy's going to come back and try to kill you. Um, but that's what I mean. Everybody has their different stretch of the career. Sure. Max Holloway was like that too. Yeah. You know what I mean? He lost his first UFC fight. And then he had about, I think he was 3-3 three and three in the UFC at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
and you wouldn't have ever thought he'd be like one of the most dominant champions in history. It's so hard to predict these things, yeah. and you never know which guy's going to find that spark to really take him to the next level. And that's all it takes, too. And that, do I think they really, do I think these guys just suddenly got more skillful? No. They I fucking th- I, grinded. I th- yeah, I think, I think, I think it was more of a mental And switch, mental, yeah. You know what I mean? Sure. And there, there's a book I'm reading right now called Mind Gym, and it's the same thing. It's like, how does a pitcher go from having a great game or having a terrible game to having maybe a, a no hitter or something like that? Right. You know what I mean? He didn't get better in a week. Sure. He didn't get yeah. better in two weeks. He didn't even get better in six months. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it happens in a, tennis all the time too. You're yeah. right. I see it all the time. That's why honestly I love tennis. There there's a I don't know if you've ever watched the Untold series on uh thing, but the one about the tennis player, Marty something, I wanna say his name Marty. is. Uh, or Mortogalu coach? No, he's a. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I didn't dude. see that one, but I know which one you're talking about. He was like of, friends with Mer- um, Roddick or some shit. Or yeah, like yeah. He's an American guy. He, yeah, they yeah. were like brothers almost. Like it, that guy's family pretty much adopted this guy. Yeah, yeah, okay. I and, didn't see uh, that one. I want to see it though. It looks good. It is one of the best like mental really? game documentaries I've ever watched in my life. So <clears throat> see, that guy basically one day decided he's like, you know what? I feel like I basically feel like turning my career around. Right. So he's going to, he turned his career around. He His goal at first was. He was drinking and stuff, quit alcohol altogether. Yeah. You know what I mean? And even if that's not so much a physical advantage as it is a mental advantage. Huge. When you when you discipline yourself yeah. like that, uh, like I don't think people who wake up early are necessarily better off like right. physically or you know what I mean right. than somebody who wakes up late. I think it's just a discipline factor of, you know what I mean? You're building self-confidence in that. You're accomplishing something for yourself, sure. and that translates to everything else you do in sport or life in general, right? 100%. Uh, so, yeah, that documentary is crazy. He just decided one day he was going to turn it all around, and he did. He became a top-five player in the world. I think he beat uh, he either beat Federer or Nadal at one that's, point. He beat That him. alone is insanity yeah. in the sport. That's like beating Silva or, like, <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's fucking crazy. That's what I mean. So that that's all it takes is one little mental switch one day, and a guy could be, go from being – he was only, like, maybe top 50 at best at one point, right. and now he's top 10, top 5, you know? You know what I thought you were going to bring up? There's <clears> another <throat> tennis documentary, which I think you might find interesting. It's about a – it's, a, like, a coach's playbook or something like okay. that. And uh, it has a guy, his name is Patrick Mortogalu, who was Serena Williams' coach. Okay. And essentially, uh, Serena was at Wimbledon struggling, you know, mm. struggling at the net, like net points. Yeah. She was not really good at it. She was, like, losing, like, 70% of them, which yeah. is super uncharacteristic for a high-level, like, tennis player. Yeah. Those are, like, some of the easiest points. Mm-hmm. So what he ended up doing one day is, he, like, he, she was still in the tournament. She was, like, kind of, like, you know, look like she could lose any match. But he was, yeah. like, listen, um, I actually just pulled up the stats, and every time you come to the net, you win 80% of the time. Like, you win the point. Yeah. And she's like, oh, really? I thought, like, I thought I was losing them. Yeah. And he lied to her. He's like, no, no, you're actually winning them. Yeah. So next game, she goes out, she adapts, like, the mindset that she's actually, like, a winner, winner. at the net. Yeah. And then she actually lives up to that stat with 80% at yeah. the net. I was like, what the? That's f- all it takes, man. That's it's all it all takes. mental switch, man. And honestly, I like tennis, too, because that's another individual sport at mm-hmm. the end of the day. It's, yeah. it's, it's different from team sports altogether, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, tennis... Fine margins as well. Another, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The difference between winning and losing is that big, yeah. you know? And uh, the difference between being good and great, that, that yeah, big. Yeah, yeah, you know? 100%. Small. Um, and so, yeah, I respect tennis players a lot as far as that aspect, and it's very interesting to listen to their careers and how it plays out and right. stuff like that. So uh, We were but, talking, you were 7-1. and one. You, got your t- you got the title, right? Where were we yeah, at? Yeah, so I lost to Morgan again, and then I lost the belt. And right. then uh, Jordan beat him for the belt after that. So uh, I didn't fight for TKO again after that. I ended up fighting for an organization called PFC, a local Ontario promotion. Right. And then I went 3-0 and in that organization. By the way, why did you do that? Why did you stop for... Uh, so TKO was already on the downswing. All the way out. So uh, TKO always... I'm sure TKO will come back at some point, like... They they bred GSP Sam Stout Mark Hominick, uh Chris Ordecki Damn. like a lot a lot yeah. of great guys Dave Luazo like multiple people that right, have right, right. either won UFC belts or fought for UFC belts right That's so crazy, yeah. TKO was definitely by far the biggest they paid pretty well considering it was a regional show um, and as far as it was the only Canadian promotion on UFC Fight Pass at the time so it was a lot of exposure That's huge yeah huge and. Uh, just very professional all around, you know what I mean? Production value, everything. Right. Did, there was a fight where Kyle had it here in uh, the Ice ice Park. Was that yeah. a TKO production? Uh, that was BTC. That was BTC. So BTC? TKO okay. was only Montreal-based. Oh, okay, I gotcha. Uh, and then, so I fight for PFC. I go 3-0 and with them against some decent opponents. And then uh, COVID kind of hit. So I fought the December before COVID mm-hmm. happened in that March. So when COVID happened... 
basically after I already had gone three and oh, uh, I was I think eleven and three at the time. So at, see, at what? How twenty two? Uh, just turned twenty two. Just twenty. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's really so. Uh, just turned twenty two. Um. So we were pretty much expecting a UFC call prior to the whole COVID situation. You Is know that how I mean? it usually works? Like you have a good streak in your region and then like, what? Yeah. Uncle Dana gets a fucking, it's like a bat call. Yeah. Pretty He's like, so TJ. <laughs> yeah. I'll be in Ontario. And like there was <laughs> a, a, a UFC card. Kyle actually fought for in Vancouver. Yes. And to GSP's uh, former, like he was a the coach, same coach as GSP. Uh, so G- he fought Nordine in, uh, that was a different card. Ottawa. Ottawa, okay. And then he fought uh, someone else in Vancouver. But when they came to the Vancouver area, they had reached out and basically told me to be ready for a short notice, potentially, you know what I mean? Because that's what they look oh, as for. As a filler? Like a yeah, fill-in? Oh, just okay. in case someone gets hurt, right? So uh, so we're already on the radar. We know that, right? Uh, yeah. At that point. Um, and that was actually before my last... PFC fight, I believe. So I was probably only ten and three or something like okay, that. Okay, but you were waiting for that call, yeah. and so you're so always maintaining weight, all that stuff. Or yeah, yeah. Uh, so before that, prior to that, uh, even winning that last PFC fight, I kind of knew I was in that right, right, you know, right zone. You know, ready to get the call, and uh, I'd already fought uh, experienced guys, everything, you know, so everything kind of checked out. I didn't really, ha- I never really had a padded record. I never really fought bums, right. you know, I'd always search for the best matchups. Even fighting Morgan a second time was more my doing than him calling for a rematch, really? right? So, okay. um, <clears throat> um, and, uh, so COVID hits in March and then, uh, COVID hits March and then kind of everything's like, oh, don't really know what's going to happen now. You sure. Know? I don't know how, what's going on, but UFC continued to be the only sport really happening at the time. Fucking shout out to Uncle Dana for yeah. that one. That was special. Really. And that's where the sport grew more than it ever Yeah, has. it did, yeah. <clears throat> Especially when it comes to sports gambling and stuff like that. You know what I mean? He's taking advantage of a market where it's like, yeah. you know, you got people that love to gamble and there's nothing else to gamble on but fights. <laughs> right, right, right. I didn't think about that at all. Yeah, yeah that so that, that was huge for yeah. the organization. And uh, so... At that point, I was just, honestly, I was just running. I was running and uh, working with my boxing coach, Kara. One of my boxing coaches, Kara. Just at her house because no gyms, you gyms weren't it, right? open, right? right? And nothing was open. Welcome so I was to Canada, in, by the way. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't let's yeah. not go down that fucking route. Me and you have been fishing <laughs> about Canada and COVID for like. Hopefully they times. don't mandate the boosters. It seems oh, like it's they coming. Might. Well, fucking this place. Anyways, uh, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but, um. So I get the call to go to Contender Series, actually. You're so right. that's UFC pretty much, right? What uh, season is this, by the way? Uh, this is They've been doing this for quite a bit now. I want to say four? season four. Four, yeah. <clears throat> uh, like week two, season four, something like that. And uh, so I get the call, I want to say, in June. And then I'd already had like a trip planned for Vancouver at the time, all that, just because uh, Vancouver was the only place, like, opened up or whatever at that Semi period Semi-opened or whatever, open meant at the time, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'd already had a vacation plan, and then I ended up going to Vancouver and just training pretty much the whole time I was there. Still kind of enjoying myself doing stuff, but sure. uh, so did all that, got some great training in while I was in Vancouver, and then uh, come back from Vancouver, and they're like, well, can you come out to Vegas for the... Because I'd already planned to do my training camp in Vegas when I got back because I can't train in Anywhere Canada. Else. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. Um, so uh, I'd gotten back and they asked me to go early for like a produ- like to do the production parts of the, like the interview, pre-interview, all right, that right, stuff. Right, right, right. So basically I got back from Vancouver. I was like in Vancouver for like 10, 11 days and then get back. It was, I got back right on Canada Day. Um, I had two days in Windsor and then just flew right out to uh Flew right out Vegas. to Vegas right. and uh, did my whole training camp there. My coach care actually came for the whole camp for that time. And, uh, yeah, had a great camp. It all worked out. And then had my contender series fight, won. Um, I forgot how contender series was. It, is there any of that, like, house stuff with contender series? No. Or is it just, like, they call up a bunch of guys. It's yeah. like a Mortal Kombat fucking tournament. Yeah. The winners <clears throat> potentially have a so shot at it's not even a tournament. It's just... You go fight and one guy. fight one guy, and it's oh. like a tryout for the UFC, okay. essentially. Gotcha. And uh, 
it was a really weird experience because it was the first time I'd fought without a crowd because despite UFC being run still, there was still no audience allowed. There was an audience in that Detroit place when uh, you were oh, you're boxing? Yeah, there, there was, <laughs> e- even in the smallest show I've ever yeah. fought in, there's been some drunk guy yelling in the stands <laughs> at some point, right? So uh, fighting in contender series, it was like you could hear a pin drop in the arena, right? That's spooky. It, it's so weird, so yeah. weird. And it's a di- little different vibe too because they don't run it like a professional show. They basically call you into the ring. They don't announce your name. Hey, you're up. Okay, you're up. Everybody goes into the ring. Ref just looks. You ready? You ready? It's like That's almost so like a, spooky. There's no like, like walkout. Was there no walkout? No. There's no like official walkout. No entry music. No nothing. That's so odd. Contender series. They really make it like uh, almost like a sparring session, pretty much. Yeah, like a sparring session for the fight of your life, basically. So That's crazy. It's a different vibe because the energy's not there and stuff. Right. So. <clears throat> super weird, but uh, so I end up getting the win there and get a contract. Um, that day, the, after that the fight, day, yeah, right Uncle after Dana the fight, yeah. came up to you said, "Here's the yeah, just uh, yeah, you're you're in basically." Wow. Sweet. Uh, so 22 years old, I'm in the UFC now, and then <laughs> how'd that feel? Like that's like, I mean, that's a lifetime dream almost happening at 22. That, yeah, is that it, spooky or a little bit. Or? <laughs> uh, yeah, honestly, and like I'll get into that soon, but it yeah. was like super overwhelming following that you know what i mean because as far as like it's a lot right yeah like i had a lot of hype coming off the contender series because i have a pretty like uh extensive background as far as not even just fighting just like life story in general you know right and uh so uh they advertise that a lot during the pre-fight and everything so right after the fight it was like oh boom you just doubled your follower count on all your social media, right. pretty much. So. But it was also like the attention now to like your personal life. And yeah, like this, and that kind of was that was kind of new, right? Because yeah, these other organizations don't give a fuck. Like, no, they don't give a shit. No, the yeah. Uh, so the UFC uh, <clears throat> really started hyping me up, and then so I go to see my girlfriend at the time in in Winnipeg, um, and it was cool because it was the first time I'd been noticed like outside my own city. So yeah, someone I was in the mall in Winnipeg, and someone asked me for a picture. Damn, so, UFC is so fucking big. Yeah, eh? it's crazy, yeah. and. Uh, so, um, got all that, uh, and then I got a call when I was in Winnipeg, like, oh, do you want to fight, uh, Derek Minner? And it was, like, only a four-week notice or something like that. So, I was, like, really good fight. Uh, I could still make weight. I've been maintaining my weight pretty good. So, I was, like, yeah, for sure. Let's right. do that. A really good fight for me. Um, <clears throat> and then, so, rate right from Winnipeg, fly back to Vegas to do training. So, haven't been home at this point in, like, almost three months. Wild, know? yeah. Um, so... Um, do my training camp in Vegas, and then at some point, I would say it's probably two weeks, two and a half weeks out of the fight, I get like a grade two strain in my LCL, like grappling. So my knee was just fucking blown out pretty right. much. Uh, and at the time, it was like, uh, should I pull out? And then I was like, this is a really good matchup for me. I don't want to miss this opportunity because if I pull out of this one, maybe they'll give me. Uh, tough, sure. tough fight, you know? Yeah, you um, won't have a choice in the next one. That's exactly. Could be, it could be worse. But that's my mistake uh, as a fighter, and I'd never really been someone that pulls out of fights as far as, like, the past of my career. Sure. So I went through with it, made weight. Pretty much the rest of the camp was just focused on making weight, you know? It, it, it's tough when I couldn't run, couldn't really yeah, move around. Yeah, I was pretty yeah. much just shadow boxing in the garage at my buddy Cody's house in Vegas and just doing, like, light mid right, work because right. I couldn't really use my leg too much. Um <clears throat> so, anyways, I were you prepared the, to you? Sorry, were you prepared to use it in the like if you had to in the fight though? I mean, by the time I actually got to the fight, my knee wasn't really a factor. Oh, okay, at okay. All. So I don't want it to be but like the training was like obviously the training was terrible, right? Right. Uh, and not only that is like I'm a guy who kind of like gains confidence from hard work too. Sure. So it was like as far as going into the fight, it was almost like I was just trying to make it to the fight. I wasn't, right, right, I wasn't right. even focused on the result at that point. Right. Um, so I go out there and I lose pretty quickly, like within a minute. Yeah. I just get choked out. And uh, By the way, a fight, you can, you're going to win nine out of ten times, in my opinion. Literally, Like, I watched yeah. that, I'm like, there's no way this guy... Honestly, if I'm being yeah. completely honest, I pretty much quit, like, mentally quit. Really? Like, yeah. it, it's not like there was a... The, the submission I could have got out of, you know what I mean? It was just, yeah. oh, th- this is my way out of the fight. Okay, let's tap, you know? Right, I got That's you. That's pretty much it. And uh, it's uh, it just after that, you know what I mean? You go from being like this guy, first Canadian to ever win a contract on Contender Series. Yeah. Uh, 22 years old, you know, all this hype around you, and then everybody's just shitting on you after that. You right. Know I mean? And it's like, ooh, you know, this is fucked up. Now you see the other side of that, like yeah. getting that little bit of like clout whatever following yeah you see the darker side of like these assholes that are yeah fucking keyboard and it, warriors and that's what and that's what i mean it is like it is literally all 
guys that are, you know, m- mostly hiding behind fake accounts. I mean, it's the potato like chip meme. Yeah. It's like the guy with the fucking <laughs> potato chip. Yeah. He's like, I want to fucking dodge that head kick and fucking spun him. Like, come on, yeah. bro. Like, what the yeah, fuck? Exactly. Get out of here. Exactly. <laughs> It, or the guy that sees a guy miss weight and they're like, yeah, fuck you, yeah. he couldn't make weight. Like, okay, <laughs> What buddy. a pussy, can't make weight, like, yeah. as he's 300 pounds over didn't fucking even, weight. Yeah, it's like they think the guy didn't even try to make weight or something, it's a joke. <laughs> fucking idiots. But, uh, yeah, so, mentally I went through a very rough spot as far as all of that goes. Uh, right. Like, I was like, damn, this is... Th- I wanted to get to the UFC bad, and this is what it is. This is fucking sucks. You know what I mean? Right. This, this ain't what I want to do. You know what I mean? This right. is terrible, right? So, uh, you saw the best part of it and the worst part of it in such a short time yeah, span. Yeah, exactly. And that's crazy. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, you know, like when you watch it and when you dream about it, you don't think of how bad it could be. You know what I mean? Right. You always and think of the positive side of it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because you don't ever think you're going to lose or you don't think sure. these people are ever going to hate you or whatever. Sure. Or some of the shit messages you get. And it's like you just don't expect it. And you'd be surprised at what, how deep oh, these, yeah, these fuckers cuts go. go. Yeah. Like the, they'll yeah. talk about your family. They'll talk about all this shit. And it's like, dude, what the fuck? All I did was lose a fight. Dude, What's I had a guy to do blame me about like wars in Albania that like, I'm like, bro, I was, I don't even know what you're talking about. I wasn't even about. born. You I have to Wikipedia mean? what he was talking about. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, my that's what I mean. Like <laughs> these, these, fuck, these guys don't, <laughs> yeah. like, they don't think they just like right. say whatever's on their can. mind. Yeah. And they, exactly. They can. And, uh, but yeah, mentally went through a rough spot there. I uh, had to pull out of my next two scheduled bouts due to injury, right. like legit injuries. And uh, um, I was actually supposed to fight at MSG for one of them, which would have been Damn. amazing. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh, but uh, yeah, what I got, card? What card was this? So uh, was Col- this Covington card? versus Usman uh, two. Oh shit! Yeah, so it would have been crazy. Yeah. Um, but uh, so yeah, pull out of my next two to injury. And then uh, this is like over almost a year and a half to two years span. So I hadn't fought between my first UFC fight and my last UFC fight. I It was like two years almost. Wild, yeah. So uh, go through like a big mental lapse <clears throat> in that first year after my first fight too. And uh, that's another thing too is like when I got injured the second time, that was the only thing like if I'm going to take benefit from a loss, it's going to be, okay, next time you're hurt, actually pull out. You know what I mean? Right. Don't, don't now even, you don't make that mistake. Yeah. Don't yeah. even, I never want to go into a fight being like I wasn't a hundred percent or I wasn't even close to my hundred sure. percent. You know what I mean? Do you like, believe, sorry, do you believe in that stuff that like they always say like almost no fighter is a hundred percent going into a fight? Oh now, yeah. Right? yeah. I, I believe that a hundred, I yeah. believe that for sure. Like that nobody is a hundred percent healthy. But they're but, not like 50 or some shit. Yeah. yeah. And like for me, it's not, Am I physically 100% healthy? Is it, am I mentally, mentally 100% right, right. healthy, right? Yeah. And you could be, not have the amazing training camp, but still be healthy, you know? Right, I mean? right. And uh, <clears throat> so there was that. And then also now I have the, like, almost like a, in the back of my head, I have a fear of, like, being judged as far as, like, after that first loss, you, you I've experienced shit I've never experienced right. before. It's as far as, like, you have so much spotlight on you, even being a, this is not even like a high level UFC fight, you know. This right. is just like undercard fight, right. fighting a guy who's not ranked, and I got all these people, all these right. What happens when you get to the like the main event or yeah. what main card? Like, right. But eventually, you have to block it out. No, nobody matters, and you got to do it for because you love to do it. You right. Know? You can't do it. It has nothing to do with the spotlight. But I got, I got. You know what I mean? Pumped up with the spotlight right away, right. and it does feel good. I can't lie, but. It wasn't about fighting then, you know what I mean? Sure. Like you're you're going away from the sport at this point. Yeah, you're yeah, just thinking about fame, fucking right. whatever. And you're also in your early twenties. Yeah, it you're basically feels good. retarded. Like yeah, straight up. My language I'm canceled. <laughs> it's over. But whatever. It's true. Like I was basically retarded when I was twenty. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. You actually give a shit about what fuck most of these idiots are saying. <laughs> yeah. You're like, damn. Maybe, <laughs> it's may, true. You're like, maybe he's right. And then later on, you're like, that fucking guy. Yeah, like who the shit. fuck is that guy? <laughs> who the yeah, fuck? Exactly. So it's just all in your own head, right? Um. So. Uh, anyways, have a little bit of a hiatus. I was ske- the same guy I was scheduled for MSG. I was scheduled for again, but he ended up pulling out. Uh, so now I fight this guy named Pat Sabatini, who's close to being ranked in the featherweight rankings. Probably, I'd say if he wins his next fight, which I think he will. I think he's fighting either next week or the week after. Yeah, he'll uh, he'll most likely be top fifteen. Um, and I lose that fight in a decision. I put up a pretty good fight, but again, you know what I mean. 
felt like a guy could beat for sure. Just a little bit behind on everything sure. there as far as like wasn't reacting well, stuff like that. Did you <clears> lose uh, what two to one rounds or was it uh, doing all three? What was the, I don't on remember. the judges scorecard. It was three three oh, zero. Yeah, uh, a lot of people thought I won the first round, but it is right. what it is. You it's know it's almost I mean? irrelevant, a loss right? Is a loss. Yeah, yeah, it right. makes no difference. Um, but considering where he was in the UFC, where I was in the UFC, I was zero one. He was three and zero. Right. So it's like I took a big step up in competition because it was like his opponent had pulled out <clears throat> a guy I trained with actually Gavin Tucker. My opponent pulled out, so they just naturally matched us up. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it wasn't really about where we were. It was just convenient. Yeah. You know, as far as scheduling. That's the problem with UFC. Some of these matchups are always like <laughs> Yeah. You wonder what the logic behind them is. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. So it's like if the UFC wants to build a guy up, they'll build a guy up. And honestly, right. I felt like with Derek Minifight, they were giving me that opportunity. To, to build me up I because you, I feel like I landslide Derek Minner pretty much, like you said, nine out of ten yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, but, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much up to my last fight now. And uh, I'm a free agent at the moment, 24. So I'm looking to fight hopefully November and December, if not just for sure in December. But I would like to finish the year off strong. You know what I mean? Here in Ontario? Or? Uh, one, uh, one would be Ontario. If I fight in November, it would be Ontario. If I fight in December, it will be Alberta. All right, yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, but I've been staying very active with the uh, high-level grappling, stuff like that. Yeah, so. I've noticed. You've been doing little tournaments and yeah, stuff. Yeah, so I think a big thing. Uh, is just finding a love for competing again. Right. Uh, just like I was when I first started, you know what I mean? Like, sure. I, I like to be able to have something to look forward to and train for, uh, whether that's grappling, boxing. Like, I'm open to professional boxing fights, you know what I mean? I would love to do That'd that fun, at yeah. some point. Because... <laughs> Really, I just enjoy competing in combat sports. That's pretty much it. You know, that w that's what made the sport fun for me, and it always gives me opportunity to progress and learn more. Right. You know what I mean? If I lose in a grappling match, it doesn't mean anything, you know? Yeah. At the end of the day, Much I want to be, stakes I wanna well. be a great MMA fighter, you know? So if I can compete against some of these best grappling guys, <laughs> that's going to translate that's over to huge MMA on, very well. That's a huge, like, feather on your cap, right? Yeah. Because this is, like, this is not the only thing you're doing. And if yeah. you're beating dudes that are literally only doing that, or most of them that are only doing that, yeah. that's enormous. Like, yeah, 100%. Yeah. And it's like, it just gives me confidence as far as competition, just always getting the competitive juices flowing. And you're just, like, having a two-year... That was the longest hiatus I had between uh, competition was, like, almost two years. Right, right, right. Ever in my whole life competing, ever. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it was just good to start competing again. Honestly, it's like, like, being cut from the UFC was, like, almost a relief. For me, yeah. as far as like, okay, now I get to sit back and really work on what I want to work on without the pressure of maybe your next fight, you're losing your job. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, didn't lose, I didn't lose my job. I'm a fighter at the of end of the day. Yeah. I can fight wherever I want. Right. Did you hear about like Uz what Usman said about his loss? No. He's basically saying like, it was a massive like weight off my shoulders. Like yeah. he's basically looking at it as like, dude, like you know, you guys don't know how much this was like on, on me to, cause apparently he was one fight away from beating, uh, Silva's or tying Silva, or yeah. Silva tying or be, yeah. I don't know what it was for title win. And there was all these other like statistics that people were telling him that he was chasing. And he's like, honestly, once I lost that fight, like the whole, the weight of the world just went off yeah. his shoulders. And now it looked to me, at least when I watched the Rogan interview, it looks like he's just mentally like so much more relaxed and ready to go at it again. Do you feel like you're kind of at that level as well yourself? Like, yeah. hundred percent. So like, like I said, like, it, it when you are caught up in so much other shit other than the fights themselves, yeah. you know what I mean. You you start like what you're worrying about the record. How about you worry about winning the fight? Yeah, you know what I mean, worry like, about your opponent. Yeah. Worry about what you're gonna. It's do almost the like day he yeah. he probably became like. Now I'm, now I'm worried about being perfect, you know what I yeah, mean? You're yeah. not going to be perfect in any fight. You and might. he still won that fight, by yeah. the way, for 24 of the 25 minutes, yeah. which is out like, outrageous. Like, he lost the first round. He won the next three very dominantly. Yeah. On his way to win the title, gets caught, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, That's what happens. You're fighting the best in the world. Right. It's going to happen. That's what I mean, like, when people are like, oh, <laughs> I see people talking shit about Usman, whatever. I'm like, man, crazy. he's most likely going to come back and win the <laughs> Yeah, crazy. Like, How are you talking about shit with that guy? Yeah. He's a freak I mean. of nature. Like. Other, other than, aside from Kobe Covington, nobody's even come close right. to having close fights with him. You know what I mean? Right. Like, the Leon fight wasn't close. He got caught. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was dominating the fight. Like, as far as Usman and Kobe, that's the only fight where it was like, okay, maybe one round here, maybe yeah, one round here. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the only guy in the whole division... Aside from Cam's that, but I still, I'm not 100% sold on him yet. Yeah. We'll still see. got more to do. <clears throat> yeah, more to do 100%, yeah. right? And, uh... Well, it should be, like, a, a really eye-opening thing when you see a guy like that who's 
fucking so dominant for so long mm-hmm. still get that kind of level of hatred and stupidity oh yeah where like you think like oh wait i'm getting like whatever i lost my undercard fight for this haters like yeah it doesn't matter where you're at you're gonna that's gonna fucking follow oh, you forever so it's like it might as well get let it happen now let it adapt, adapt to it and then once you get to that level you're good yeah nothing can touch you yeah like yeah. mentally you have to understand like these people don't understand. Just to get to the UFC, you have to be a great. It's athlete. insanity. It's you know insanity. I mean? How hard it is to do? It's not like the U. Like people just watch the UFC, so they don't understand what it takes to even get there, right? Yeah. So they're like, "Oh, you, you, you just lost a UFC fight. You suck." You know <laughs> what I mean? Oh, okay, I'm still not even just the top point one percent of human beings. I'm the point one percent of MMA fighters. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like yeah, you gotta yeah, yeah, you, no, you, yeah. you, just to make it to the UFC, and it's like it's a ludicrous statement. And of course, I'm not satisfied with how my UFC run right. went at all, but I'm 24 and I have time to build. And right. now I have even more time to really create what I want to, as far as like, uh, fight getting pro- the right fights to properly build my career up. You know what I mean? Like I want to a whole rebuild process to sure. get there. If I get back into the UFC at 27, that's still young. You that's know what still I mean? the like average age. Most people get in at yeah. like most people, even in the, in the, some of the higher divisions, it's a little bit older, but in the lower divisions, like that's kind of where you're yeah. really hitting your prime. Like you're, you're, or you're starting to kind of work your way into the UFC. Exactly. Yeah. Like, mo- like if you look at the average age of a UFC champion now, it's between 32 and 37. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. What well, Usman's 37 and he's probably going to come <laughs> back and win his win belt it again. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I mean. Like Steve well, co- might come back and well, I, we don't know, but you I'm saying know. he has a possibility to be yeah. a champion at 41. Yeah. Like, what the and, fuck? And, Fran, like, Glover won it at 42. Glover, yeah, but, I a mean, great example. Take the John Jones equation out, but even sure. John Jones is in his mid-30s now. Right. Like, people, like, every every great champion's in their 30s. I think the last young champion was Brandon Moreno. I think he just turned 30 or something like that. Right. But, uh, and that's young. It's funny. Like that, the 30s young. Yeah. yeah the I got thir- time. The, <laughs> I'm, I'm good. <laughs> that's what I mean. Like, <laughs> like everybody's career yeah. is different, and... Some of these guys, like Oliveira, you have like 20 UFC fights almost before you even come to the title contention, yeah, right? Yeah. So everybody's different. Everybody's on their own path. But the MMA whole, the, the society of MMA, it's interesting. You know what I mean? I don't even think the best fighters are in the UFC, if you really? ask me. You know what I mean? I Where think there's a, Demetrius Johnson. I yeah, think, I think won, that's yeah. the 125 GOAT. Yeah. I think he still goes out there and beats the Right, Brandon Moreno and Davis and Figueroa are the only two people at 125 that matter at this point. Right, you know yeah. what I mean? Which is ridiculous because they're about to fight for a fourth time. Wasn't Pereira? I mean, Pereira only joined the UFC like what a couple yeah, years, two years ago. But he had an extensive kickboxing career. Yeah, and they really they set him up with the right fights in the UFC because they really wanted to build off that. Oh well, he beat Israel. The he beat the champ yeah. twice. You right, know let's I mean? get so him in right it, off the it, bat. <laughs> yeah, so it's like the UFC builds up who they want to build up. Right, you look at Sean O'Malley. Like, how many times are you gonna fight before you fight a guy who's ranked? I, yeah, that's, a, that's the wildest one. He fought Cheeto, got wrecked by Cheeto. Yeah, <clears throat> he fought uh, Pedro. I felt like he he lost the first round. The f- second round was going okay for him, but then the eye poke Do you think thing. it's going to end well for, or end bad for him against Jan? Yeah, I think Peter Jan's <laughs> just like... You're that guy's not gonna, a monster. That guy scares the fuck out of him. He's like five foot one. Yeah. But he's the scariest man on the planet. And Peter Jan's like, his fight with Jose Aldo was just insane. Yeah. You know what I mean? He gets his shit kicked out of him for the first two rounds, comes yeah. back and stops him, you know? Monster. And, and uh, <clears throat> that's why I mean. Yeah, Peter Jan's going to probably decimate O'Malley because... Jan, as we've seen, his only weaknesses would be in his grappling, and O'Malley's grappling is not going to be points there. for the past, like, three years. And yeah. Like, it's just going to... It's going to be, like, night and day, I feel like, but yeah. who knows? Yeah. yeah, you look at the... Uh, just the resumes alone of who who, yeah. who they've fought, you know? Jan has five-round experience. You can't beat that, you know? Multiple championship fights. Yeah. Like, yeah. To the fifth round as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fucking animal. Man, I, I don't know. I love the story. I, I'm, I'm happy we did this. I don't know. Are we at an hour? See, yeah, we did an hour. Thirty minutes, yeah. Anything else you want to talk about? Plug you're working on. You got uh, fucking. You came here ready to do some construction. Yeah, I mean, if what you guys you? need concrete work, hit me up. You need a hair. You need a haircut. You need a. Ha- you need a haircut. Hit me up. All right, dude. Uh, I got one haircut one time. My barber was out of town. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, thanks for not telling him that. Yeah. You know, yeah. You it's all good, bro. Barber. You cheat on your girlfriend. You don't fuck. No, I'm just kidding. No, exactly, bro. I'm trolling. You don't snitch on the homies. You cheat on your girl. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> by the way, that video. When was that fucking video? I got. Can I can I ask you about that? Or I don't know if that's something uh, to talk about. That was probably. 2018 for people that don't know yeah. this viral video <laughs> can i can i ask uh, not to be an asshole yeah what, ask what you want what <laughs> fucking happened like you uh i mean 
there's two sides to every story, I'm sure, but it, no, I want I want your side. I don't give a <laughs> fuck about her. Yeah, like. uh, I don't know. It was just a shitty relationship, and it uh, didn't end very well either. <laughs> but that was like your first taste of like the big internet crowd. Eh? Oh, like when you posted a fucking <laughs> yeah. So when I posted that video, it, honestly, if you if you just type in my name, it'll be one of the the suggested searches. That's so, so fucking Google. funny. Kind of like it's kind of funny. Like. <laughs> uh, and then. Uh, uh, <laughs> Luckily now it's pretty much in the it's it's at the bottom of the list, but <laughs> at the beginning it was at the top. Uh, you need a few more like highlight knockouts. <laughs> yeah, before like it gets we, washed like, away. Yeah, it gets washed. <laughs> but uh, where we? Oh yeah. So when I first posted on Twitter, me and my buddy were watching. We're like, damn, it's at twenty thousand views. And then like five minutes later, I'm like, damn, it's at forty thousand views. And then it got huge because Chad Ochocinco retweeted it. He no qu- way. He, he quoted the tweet. <laughs> no way. And then after that, it was just like boom, boom, boom. I was like, within the end of the day, it was at two million views. I'm like, holy dude. fuck, I'm like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> and then uh, the next day, it's at like four million, and that's where it capped out pretty much right around four million. And I was like, damn, that's crazy. This you know is wild. I mean? Yeah, like on Twitter, in that one day, I gained like ten thousand followers. It was nuts. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty crazy. <laughs> Who's but, got the uh, fucking last laugh? Let's go. <laughs> yeah, <That's> literally. <laughs> hey, but I felt like I've been successful since then, and you know what? I hope she's doing good. Yeah. It's all good. I mean, it's fucking, that's a great way to fucking end it. You <laughs> seem like a sweetheart. No, bro, thank you so much for your time. We've been trying to set this up for a while now. I'm happy we finally did it. If it ever happens again, we'll we'll run it back. Yeah, for sure. But man, I'll, yeah, I'll leave all you your... You can get more political next time, too. <laughs> oh, like my that. God. I was like, do we do this? Because me and you have had some fucking <laughs> chats about, like, the COVID restrictions, the vaccine oh, yeah. bullshit. Like, <laughs> we, like th- as we've lived in this place... It's gotten progressively more and more ludicrous. It's weird, man. It's actually gotten, like, to a parody level of ludicrous. Dude, like, there's still, like, Western universities, uh, not only their booster mandate, their mask mandate. Oh, are they really? They're bo- mandating a booster and a, <laughs> and a mask to come back to campus. Uh, and then you got Fanshaw five minutes down the road that has none neither. So it's like, hey, are you basic? In the same fucking, like, district. Literally, um, yeah, almost the same street. Like, guys, it's over. You took an L. <laughs> It wasn't that effective. Clearly, we're fucking, we're talking about it. It's like, what are we doing? Dude, like, we're wasting money. We're wasting I, so much time and money. We wasted so much time and money on all this shit. And I think that's what it mostly comes down yeah. to. Yeah. Like, we don't want to fucking, we, we can't just admit, hey, we were wrong about a lot of things. Oh, my bad. Let's move on. It's like, the guys in the top positions can't do that. Yeah. If me and you had, like, a conflict, whatever, and I fucked <clears> up, <throat> I'd be like, hey, bro, I fucked up. Yeah. My bad. You know, it is a lot of the top. A lot of the top positions are resigning or stepping down. Yeah, if you notice, you know, or they're fouching. They're fucking dying slowly. Yeah, just don't want (laughs) to. And and, and it's just like it's just I don't know. It's the whole society now. Just like oh, we got to be the good people. Yes. What 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 is a good person? Let me make sure that everyone knows I'm morally in the right here. Yeah, and like I'm always with whatever everyone else is thinking. I don't really give a shit. Make your money, mind your business. (laughs) It's whatever, right? You don't got to fucking tell me uh, right what's right and wrong and what what is right or wrong to me, maybe it's not right or wrong to me. Maybe I think you're an asshole. You know what I mean? 100%. And that's cool. I should be allowed to say that to 100%. whoever the fuck I want. 100%. But, and they should be allowed to say it to me. You know what I mean? If somebody's yeah. a bad person, I want to know they're a bad person. I don't but, want them to be suppressed to the point where it's like... Well, we're talking about like submit, like um, kind of, let's say, destroying free speech. Why don't we help you out by removing some of those assholes that are in your DMs? Yeah. Like, no one's talking about yeah. that. Like Straight up. It, like, yeah. <laughs> on Twitter, I could go on. T- I deleted my Twitter because that place is just cancer. Yeah, me too. That place is just cancer. It's, it's terrible. It's really the worst. <laughs> and uh, it's just like, uh, you can find a video of some Mexican cartel chopping a guy's fucking limbs yeah. off. But, yeah, you can. But you call someone a fat pig or something yeah, like that. You yeah, shit so gets, everyone get him. Your shit gets banned. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Literally. Dude, I couldn't advertise on my business account on Facebook because... I called some Karen in a comment section a fat pig. I swear to God. I seen what they banned me for. I'm like, I couldn't believe it. So they restricted my advertising rights off my off all my Are pages. You serious? So I tried to adver- like pay the money. I'm trying to pay Facebook Paid money. Advertising. Pay to advertise. It. Yeah. They're like, oh, I got like 17 more days left or something like that where I can't do it. I didn't so know it was that bad. I'm on timeout, man. I don't know. <laughs> it's some bullshit. It's, but. it's so true though, bro. I remember watching like a fucking sniper shootout in somewhere <laughs> yeah. in Mexico where like the cartel was taking over the city and it was like a fucking virus slowly taking over the city and the cops like had to surrender and then on the next like next trend it's like some fucking jordan peterson thing like he calls a a dude a chick or something i don't know what the fuck and more people care about that 
Jordan Peterson canceled. He's the fucking like the worst fucking male on the planet. His yeah. like his whole degree is bullshit. His doctor is bullshit. Like I just watched a fucking Mexican <laughs> sniper shootout yeah. in the other fucking video. Dude, I watched someone's brains get blown yes. out. Like what the fuck? <laughs> That's like that counts fine. It's journalism. It's like fuck off, bro. Like and it, it honestly it it's really detrimental to people who are creators. Yeah. Who, especially in like, I don't even know if you'll end up putting this stuff in the video, but I'm putting everything in here, yeah, brother. I don't good. care. Cancel me. And you know, fuck. that's what I mean. Like you got, well, uh, the biggest one lately is Andrew Tate. That's, yeah. the, that's huge. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, maybe, maybe yeah. you don't, maybe you don't, uh, just because you don't agree with somebody doesn't mean they should be wiped off the face of, of the course. planet. Of course. Don't know what I mean? take away his... Oh, it's like, we, we're not... We're defending free speech. Like, we're still letting him talk, but, like, you're removing his way to make money. Yeah. Which means you're killing him, essentially, and in today's world. Like, yeah, a lot of his accounts yeah. have been frozen due to this. You know what I mean? So, it's like, you're lucky... Nonsense. Lucky-, yeah, if, if you do this to maybe a smaller creator or something like that, maybe you just killed their whole income. You yeah. You know what I mean? It, it, it's whatever, but it's just it's crazy worrying. to think... It is worrying, yeah. because... It's just crazy to think like, oh, all it takes is for a few people uh, and the actual minority, in my yes. opinion, the actual minority to not like what you have to say and you're gone, you know? Well, think about what that minority actually is. When you first look at like, let's say a video with 10,000 views, yeah. you'll get a hundred comments. Yeah. So right off the bat, those hundred comments are the fucking smallest percentage of people. Yeah. Now you take those hundred comments and you take like 10 assholes yeah. that are, you know, cancel culture or whatever you're looking at like 10 people per 10,000 yeah and this is the group that gets pushed to the, everyone's fucking feed everyone's yeah. like oh my god and then like it just grows into this massive so basically what you have is 10 assholes and yeah. then the algorithm is like well if there's 10 assholes let's let's get more let's yeah find some more in there yeah. and then they all just they pile push on. it yeah yeah like 100 percent. and it's like it doesn't help that it's all go all this shit's backed by most governments yeah too, where it's like oh, okay like you said, like we were saying, like the good people. The good, you know, you know what's funny? That video I made about like we should AK-47 people that don't get vaccinated. Yeah, like yeah. I made a parody video <laughs> basically saying like we're not doing enough. We need to start executing unvaccinated yeah. people. It was obviously a parody. But people will legitimately, legitimately agree with this, <laughs> which is which is a shame. You know what That's I mean? where it's gotten though, where like the parody is, <clears throat> when parody becomes like reality. indistinguishable between reality, it's like we're living in some weird like dystopian future. Dude, yeah, it's like, if you don't agree with me, just you should be dead. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. Excuse me. Kill them. Ban them. Some demonetize them. Like, wait, wait, wait. Aren't you the guys that like, talk about like free speech? Aren't like this is the whole point of this. What like, is liberal? Exactly. What is that's exactly what it should what be. What is right? liberal? Right. We said we were gonna do it. We fucking did it. All right, whatever. <laughs> it's fine. We did an hour, bro. Thanks for your time. Yeah, no Love problem. having you Thank on. You. You're welcome back whenever you want. Like I said, I'll leave all your shit in the bio. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Beautiful. Appreciate it.